have your say on the Laurie Atlas Morning Show on 990 4 hour Pauline Hanson, the leader of One Nation, is on the line at home for a rare moment, fresh from Afghanistan. Good morning. Good morning, Laurie. If I sound a bit tired, I am. I'm still trying to get over this, so it's been a long haul to get back here. And, and yeah, a bit of uh, yeah, bit of jet lag happening. How long's the trip? Um, to from Australia, we had to fly to Darwin, then Darwin over to the Middle East, and mm. um, so you know, from Darwin, it was about a twelve-hour trip. Um, yeah. So just even getting to Darwin, it's about four hours, and then you know, then it was further on from mm. from there. So. In the last 55 hours, I've had about six hours broken sleep, so I had sure. a good night's sleep. Good to hear. Now, you, you've called immediately upon your return for uh, Australian troops to stay in Afghanistan because you're still worried about terrorist groups regaining a stronghold. What's the situation there at the moment as you saw it? It is still a... Um, when we went up to Afghanistan, into uh, Kabul, we were actually mm. at Kabul, and um, because of security reasons, I won't discuss um, the the camps or the sites or anything like that. Mm. Um, it's very much a hot spot, very much on on um, what can I say? Alert all the time for there are bombings that are happening, shootings, insurgents are still um, trying to make their mark in in the town around um, Afghanistan. The it is so important that we stay there. But the fact, Laurie, is that we have lost so many lives in fighting this battle mm. to stop ISIS and stop the Taliban. We have now, you know, also put a lot of money into it, but not just Australia. We're talking about there's about approximately seventy other countries around the world that are involved in the Middle East. The country now is starting to get back on its feet. I had a lot of briefings with brigadiers, colonels. Mm. I even spent two hours with the Afghan army. And in speaking to the brigadier, I went through their whole training program. And it is so important. They're now starting to understand um, military. They were never around 10 to 15 years ago. We are mentoring them with other countries. They have to gain that knowledge and experience. And this is what they've got, the young ones coming through. You've got a problem also, that lack of uh, literacy, Mm. being able to... um, Your education is another big thing that is hindering them. And we've got now women entering the military, plus also the police force. So we're mentoring them in the police force as well, so that they can handle, you know, the policing side of things. Um, We're actually helping them to actually deal with the election that's coming up on October the 20th to the gaining democracy so that people can can go out and vote. There's so much that's happening over there. And if we pulled out too soon, Laurie, mm. all that is going to be lost because I'll tell you what's going to happen. ISIS is now infiltrating Afghanistan. They are fighting with the Taliban. But also they will spread their tentacles. If they have another, a big win over there, their tentacles will spread throughout the world and we will have people that are here in Australia that will, that will jump on the bandwagon with them we have fundamental extremists here. They will see it as a big win over there, and we will start having problems here. Yes, we sometimes forget about the Taliban in our um, efforts to fight ISIS. So you're saying that they've kind of teamed up in a way, do you think? No, no, they hate each other. That's what I thought. But so... ISIS is now, because of our efforts in Syria and Iraq, hmm. they are now actually, they've reduced their so they haven't got the stronghold in those countries as they yeah. did, and they're starting to come across the borders into Afghanistan. It's a mess, now, isn't it? It's, 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 it's ironic, isn't it? The ISIS hate the Taliban, the Taliban hate Hamas, and and they all yes. loathe each other, and, and one could and say... And the they're fighting the Shiites, and yes. it, it, it is a real big hot spot. They're fighting this themselves, and it's so strange. Yes. It's so, but, it's so sorry, odd. Do you see hope? Yes, I do. Okay. And this, this was so beneficial to my going over there on this trip because I had my reservations about it, but going over there. To see that the country now is, is building again, there's hope from the people. The people are so grateful and appreciative of us being there. Mm. You know, I spoke, and even the soldiers, and I don't want anyone to think that our soldiers are made to go over there. That's not the fact. The soldiers are so, um, you know, one soldier said to me, he said, Pauline, he said, will you please tell the ABC, they put it there, that we didn't want to be here. That is not the case. Okay. We all want to come here. It's like we've trained for this. This is why we got into the defence. 
And he said, one soldier said to me, it's like, when we actually, my son said to me, Dad, why do you want to go over there? He said, well, son, when you train for your footy match, he said, you don't want to play B grade. He said, you, you train or do all that training to be in the A grade. He mm. said, it's no di- different for us. But I can see the benefits of this. Um, I think the country, if we pull out too soon, Laurie, I can't put a time frame on it. Sure. No one can put a time frame on yeah. it. But if we pull out too soon, the whole thing will just fall into a pile of can. They are not ready to, to deal with it by themselves. And it's over a period of time. We will slowly pull out of it. But too soon, it'll be a waste of lives, waste of money, and nothing will, will come of it. And that's my opinion. Yeah, it would be a shame to, as you say, pull out too fast because the, the, the Middle East is a, is a cesspool of various interest groups. It's, uh, it's But there's all these countries that people sad. don't know are involved in mm. it. You've got Czech, Czechoslovakia, you've got yeah. Romania, you've got Poland, mm. apart from, you know, Italy and Germany and... Um, did the soldiers uh, did the soldiers give you any thoughts on, on on Syria at all, or any of the people give you some thoughts on Syria? There's another cesspool. It's not too far from Afghanistan. It's just awful. It's what's going not, on there. No, I basically spoke to the soldiers that were in Afghanistan. Mm. Um, so not on about Syria. We didn't have briefings to do with Syria. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's basically there. But you know, I've it wasn't a junker trip. If people thought that was it, it wasn't. It was a tough trip. Mm. From the day that we landed, and of course, it's, you're on the plane for virtually, um, what, 18, 20 hours, and then you hit the ground, and straight away, I'm into briefings, and then we do, straight away, we did training that day. So we landed in the morning over there at 7.30 in the morning. We didn't finish till 7 o'clock that night, 8 o'clock before I climbed in bed, because then we go into immediately training, which every soldier that hits the ground there, whether you're a brigadier, whether you're a private, Everyone has to do this training. Mm. So you could be a doctor, whoever. So that training takes you right through how to apply um, medical. Mm. So if a soldier, anyone gets um, blasted or they get shot, you know how to deal with that. You, you're taught um, and um, spoken about with training of hand, handling of guns. We, we went out to the firing range with the, with the soldiers, so now we know how to handle a gun, how to shoot with a handgun. Right. The respect for guns, mm. and you know, then it goes through the legalities, um, psychologists, doctors, chaplains, um, all the briefings from the different departments. So every soldier knows um, what to expect and what to do over there. So we've had that, and that went for three days. We did a mock up of a um, walk traveling with the troops. There was a blast. You have had injured soldiers, mm. how to deal with that as well. So constantly over there. Um, a lot of the time, I, I wore a, a vest. Sure. And, you know, yeah. in full um, full army gear, there was yeah. no civilian clothes whatsoever. And I ate and I slept in the same bunk as, as the soldiers. Um, used the mm. same bathrooms as soldiers. And I've got to tell you, Larry, unisex bathrooms, I was gobsmacked. <laughs> so so it, just, it didn't go down well with me. <laughs> but I'll bet. You gotta... The younger generation, they've got no, no oh, issue with it. No, but, no. Um, Righto. Yeah. Just a couple of things going on while you're away, which I'd like your opinion on. Um, the former Liberal Minister, Susan Lee, uh, who was dismissed under somewhat dubious circumstances, I, I, I believe is now searching for relevance, and she's called, uh, she's called for a private member's bill to phase out live sheep exports to the Middle East. Uh, this did not go down very well when Prime Minister Gillard, former Prime Minister Gillard, had a knee-jerk reaction when there were some issues with cattle. Uh, do you have any, any thoughts on this? Well, just look at what happened with the live cattle export. We do the same with the sheep. It's going to be exactly the same scenario again. Mm. And I know, and I spoke to a lot of farmers, they actually, it really hurt them, and, mm. and some of them went under. Yep. We cannot have a knee-jerk reaction. Farmers um, care about their, their cattle and sheep in, in live exports, and it's like, you know, they put a lot of time and effort into it. They don't want to see this happen. Mm. It's been one shift that I understand at this stage that the 2,400 sheep that were actually died. We need to ensure that people are on that shift to actually look at the, the conditions and circumstances. If it fails, then, they, then they've got to answer to this. Um, if that ship, my personal opinion, if they, lo- they lose numbers like that on the ship, that ship should not be allowed to actually cart um, livestock again. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, 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 do the wrong thing. This is the way the people from the Middle East want it. They want 
their sheep delivered this uh, not delivered this way, but they want live sheep exports. That's how Correct. they that's how they want it to happen. And you can't just knee jerk and say, "Oh, we're not going to give that to you. We're going to send you what you don't want." They'll just go, "Oh, well, we'll go somewhere else." That's right. Yeah. And the thing is that in a lot of these places that they send it, because the quantities that they need, they can't um, store. Um, already processed mm. meat. They don't have the refrigeration for it and they need to slaughter the beast when it suits them, when they need that that mm. um, that meat. So... Yeah. And no, I'm more than surprised that I'm more than surprised that Susan Lee can't uh, can't see that. Anyway, uh, just quickly to uh, the Royal Commission into Banks. I, I know you, you supported that, didn't you? Oh, Laurie, I drove it. Well, it's. Uh, I'll it. tell you what. The very it's, first day. It is a cesspool. Let me tell you. And yes. uh, the CEO we of AMP it. has already resigned. Craig Miller. He resigned this oh, morning. I can't believe it. And I've got AMP shares, and now that's gone under. I couldn't believe it when I heard that. Mm. But anyway, are you are you surprised uh, by what we're seeing? Just sideline. No, I'm not. No. Because, and I tell you what, this came from, and I've got to give him credit. Rod Rod Cullerton, our senator from WA, he lost his property, and he actually brought it to my attention from the very start, and that's why I endorsed Rod Cullerton. But besides everything that happened, even from the very first meeting that we had with the Prime Minister, I was virtually arguing, and Rod was arguing with the Prime Minister about needing Royal Commission. The Prime Minister was adamant it's not going to happen. Mm. You're, not, you're never going to get your Royal Commission. And then we, were, we badgered about it, and then, I, and then we got the Senate inquiry into it, which Malcolm Roberts headed. Who's a little, he's a little terrier, mm. and he latched onto this. We then got people in that to come forward with their submissions who'd lost their properties. Then we actually um, presented that, and I said, look, to Rod, I said, let's get the Senate inquiry up first, present the evidence, then we can we get a foot in the door, then we will push for Royal Commission. And that's exactly how it happened. But they were adamant there was never, ever going to be a Royal Commission. I sure were. Now, people credited us for the best inquiry into it, because there's pre, been previous ones, the best inquiry into it, uh, the banking sector was under one nation. And we've actually been able to, through my office, we've saved at least six people at the stage from losing their properties and have got reimbursements back from the bank. We're still driving it. We're still working with the farming sector and the banks to come to the party to actually compensate these people. So we have been, this has been relentless for the, since I've been in Parliament. I've only got time for a yes or no answer. What do you think about maybe a Senate inquiry or a or a Royal Commission into the uh, the way the Australian Tax Office conducts its business? Um, definitely, the it, there is it's a huge issue that I'm I'm looking at now. I've got a former tax advisor that's worked in taxation for the last twenty years in my office. I have gained a lot of information um, about this. The, the tax office is, has their hands tied to do investigations into the companies which need to be opened up wide. Mm. Yeah. All right. They seem to be chasing the people who can't afford to fight them uh, rather than the people who can afford to pay a little more tax. It's the shame um, of it all. Taxation, you will see what, what will come out. Mm. Uh, a lot of things that I'm doing behind the scenes, people aren't aware of it, but I've got my head across a lot of issues that's mm. important to the Australian people. I've been on about multinationals for the last 22 years not yeah. paying their taxes here, and I think that's why they targeted me to get me out of Parliament, because it was multinationals, mm. and we need to target them. And they, they are too gutless, Laurie, both sides. I don't care who it is, whether it's the Coalition or whether it is the, the Labor Party, they are all too gutless to go after the multinationals. They think that we actually need them in this country. Yes, we do but on our terms, not Absolutely. their terms. They come here because they know they, they're not going to be chased after their taxes. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Take care. Have a good night's rest again. Yeah, thanks, Laurie. <laughs> pleasure. And listen, Laurie, mm. I just want to wish everyone, please come out and support Anzac Day next, next yeah, week. Absolutely. It's important to support the, the, our soldiers. Absolutely, whether they be uh, past soldiers or the ones Correct. you met in Afghanistan. Absolutely. Good on so, you, Pauline. Take yeah. care. Bye, Laurie. Pauline Hanson, leader of One Nation.